Question number one. A curve C has the equation y equals 2x squared into x minus 5. Find using calculus the x coordinates of the stationary points of C. Look at question number one part A. You are given a function and they want you to find the x coordinates of the stationary points. We don't know how many stationary points this function has. So what we are going to do at the stationary point your slope will be zero at the turning point the slope will be zero so we are going to find the slope or in other words differentiate it with respect to x and then equate it to zero because the deri first derivative of y dy upon dx is the slope gradient function so at the stationary point the gradient will be zero so equate dy upon dx to zero and solve the equation you can get the coordinates of the stationary point. So first thing, you can remove the bracket first. So it will be 2x cubed minus 10x squared. If you differentiate this, it will become 2 times 3, 6x squared minus 2 times 10, 20x. That's the first derivative of the function. So now we are we need to equate this first derivative to 0 to find the values of x. So 6x squared minus 20x take it as 0. So we can take x as a common factor. So uh, yeah. So it will become 6x minus 20 is 0. Equate them separately to 0. Your x is 0 or your x is 20 upon 6 when you equate this to 0 or you can write it as 10 upon 3. That's it. We got the stationary uh, coordinates of the stationary points already. X coordinates. One X coordinate is X is 0 and the other one is X is 10 upon 3. That's it. You don't need to do anything else at all. This question part A has four marks. They want you to find the coordinates of the stationary point. The catch here is you need to know at the stationary point, at the turning point, the slope will be zero. The gradient will be zero. So find the gradient function, equate it to zero, so you can find the coordinate of the x-axis. If they want to find the, if they want you to find the actual point, you know the coordinates of uh, x. Substitute them separately in here. You can find the coordinates of y. So when you substitute, in case, here you don't need to do this in for this question. So suppose they want you to find the exact coordinates or x and y coordinates of the stationary point. Substitute x is 0 here. So your first point will be 0, 0. x is 10 upon 3 here and simplify. That's your value, whatever the value is. So you will get two points. That's it. Substitute 10 upon 3 here and use calculator to simplify. But in this question, they want you to find only the x coordinate. You got two x coordinate and four easy marks for this question. In part B, they want you to find the values of x for which the function is increasing. So there are several methods to find this, but you look at this part B, it has only two marks. So, so there you, you, need to, you need to come up with the easiest way to find the values of x for which the function is increasing. But here I'm going to sketch the graph. In your exam, you will not have enough time to sketch the graph now, but I'm trying to explain the concept. So when I sketch, when I take this function, 2x cubed minus 10x squared, it's a cubic function. So it's a cubic function. And in P1, pure math 1, we learn how to sketch a cubic function. You solve this function equate it to 0, 2x cubed minus 10x squared equals 0. Take x squared as a common factor out, so 2x minus 10 is 0. When you equate them separately, you get x is 0, 2 equal points, because x squared is 0, so x is 0, 0. And your next point is 2x minus 10 is 0, so x is 10 upon 2, which is 5. And the coefficient of x cubed is positive. So we know for sure the graph will be, it will touch the x-axis at 0 because it has two equal roots here and it will pass through number 5. 
So the graph will be something like this. This is your given function. Now it has two turning points, one at zero, one at zero, another at 10 comma three. Let's say this is the turning point. The X coordinate is 10 upon three. The X coordinate is 10 upon three. Now the question is, at, at which point uh, or for what values of x the function is increasing if you take a look at the function the function is increasing here until 0 the turning point 0 and then decreasing until it reaches the stationary point here turning point here then again it's increasing so by looking at the function we know for sure if x takes any value less than or equal to 0, the function is increasing. But from 0 to 10 upon 3, the function is decreasing, so leave it. Then if it takes anything more than 10 over, 10 over 3, the function is increasing again. So straight away, your solution is x less than or equal to 0, x greater than or equal to 10 upon 3. Two solutions. These are all the x values for which the function is increasing. But we have only just two marks for this uh, for this question, and we won't we won't have enough time to sketch the graph and find the uh, x values. So the easiest way, since the question has only two marks, the easiest way look at the points. One is zero, another one is ten upon three. And the number line x. We have 0 here, 10 upon 3 here. Now we need to know whether this is a maximum point. These two points are whether they are maximum point or minimum point. In differentiation in P1, if I am not wrong, we have learned how to find the, uh, how to check whether the stationary point is maximum or minimum. You need to take the first derivative of this. Take the first derivative of this when you differentiate after multiplying this 2x cubed minus 10x squared. The first derivative of y prime is 6x squared minus 20x. That's your first derivative. So you got the stationary points already by equating this to 0 in part a. So we have this function already, the gradient function. You need to differentiate this function again. That means y double prime or d square y upon dx square. When you differentiate this again, you get 12x minus 20 times 120. That's your second derivative. And using the second derivative on the points, you can easily check whether the point is a maximum or minimum. So when you substitute x is 0 here, your y double prime at x is equal to 0 is... When you substitute x is 0 here, it will be negative. When you substitute x is 10 upon 3 here, it will be 12 times 10 upon 3, which is 40 minus 20 is positive. y double prime at x is equal to 10 upon 3 is positive. We don't need the values. We need to know whether they are the value is positive or negative. If it is negative, the point is a maximum point. If the sec uh, second derivative is negative at certain point, the point should be minimum. Not any point, the stationary point, the, co the x coordinate of the stationary point. So true enough, you can see here, this is the maximum point and this one is minimum point. So now let's imagine you don't have this graph, but all we know is this is a maximum point and this is a minimum point. So you have a maximum point here, minimum point here. That means from zero, when x is zero, the function is maximum, but when x, x moves along this number line to 10 over three, your graph becomes minimum. The graph takes minimum value. That means graph is going down that's why from maximum value, the, the graph is decreasing 
that's why that uh, graph has minimum value at 10 upon 3 so we know for sure in between this limit in between this limit the function is decreasing so definitely if this is a maximum point means the function should be increasing from some point the function should be increasing and reaches here to the maximum point so if you take all these values the function is an increasing function then from 0 to 10 upon 3 the function is decreasing for sure because from maximum value the graph reaches to the minimum value here and minimum value this is a minimum point and it's a turning point also so definitely after this point the graph is going to go up it will not go down because if it goes down further this is not a stationary point at all so the graph is going to go up after this so if x takes any value greater than this the graph is going up again so this is uh, uh, one solution x less than or equal to 0 x greater than or equal to 10 by 3 so now one of my students asked me this this part this part at this part I said the function is increasing but what if we look at this way is the function decreasing so that's a valid question also, correct? When you look at this way, the function is decreasing here, increasing here. But, but we always take the number line from minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity this way. So when x takes minus infinity, when the x approaches 0, the curve is increasing. We don't take this way. So when the x approaches 0, the curve is increasing. Then when the x moves further away from 0 to the positive side, it is decreasing at some point, reaches at minimum value, then increasing again. That's why our value is all the negative values including 0 and all the positive values greater than or equal to 10 by 3. So we, we don't need to sketch this graph also. You can straight away say that the point, this is a maximum point and this is a minimum point so the x will be decreasing in between the maximum and the minimum point the graph should be decreasing so that means the graph should be increasing before this maximum point should be increasing and reaches this point and from this stationary point it is increasing again so we can say that if this is 0 x less than or equal to 0 if this is 10 upon 3 this value corresponding x value will be x greater than or equal to 10 upon 3. So for two more, you don't need to sketch the graph. You can straight away say this is the solution.